I can't even imagine having to let our kids go by themselves across the ocean into a country where the culture is so different. I had so much respect for those parents. When we are talking about the United States, they feel like anything can happen, any sort of miracle. The process of selecting children is word of mouth. We have explained to the families that we do as much as we can. Kids have had prosthetic eyes, prosthetic arms, burn victims, heart surgeries, corrective foot and orthopedic surgeries. war victim children who lost hands or feet. We had a child coming in who was supposed to be having some surgery on her hand for a, a burn that was there. And during the exam, the doctor comes back out and looks at me and said, all right, I need her to see the cardiologist. Now she has a hole in her heart. So she actually ended up going to Jacksonville where he had, where he had a pediatric cardiologist who took care of her. And then she came back here and then we did the rest of the surgeries and got her sent back finally. I get four times more back from working with these kids as I do what I put into it. But there is a whole team of physicians that are donating their time there are host families that donate their time, and it is, uh, it really is a group effort. Salim had been flying a kite with his friends. Great pastime in Afghanistan. He was on the rooftops of their buildings, and his kite had gone down, and he went to grab the tail of the kite, and instead he grabbed a live wire and was electrocuted. He was 11 years old, his arm turned black. The very first surgery he had in Afghanistan, and they, they amputated at the hand. That got infected, so they took him across the board to Pakistan and amputated below the elbow. And that got infected, they had to amputate above the elbow. He came to us with just the residual limb for a prosthetic arm. He got the prosthesis only about a week before he left. So excited wearing it, and he was so proud. So it was kind of sad because he went back so soon after getting it. It took a long time to make, it was hard. It was kind of funny because you could pick the different colors. He wanted to pick the real white skin. I said, no, yours is brown. They kind of had like a Hispanic, the black skin, and then white. I'm like, no, yours is in between. We had him pick kind of like the tan. He was one that really wanted to get back to his family. He was one of seven boys. He had little baby brothers he left at home. He just could not wait to get back. He was a lot more content the next year when he came back. The first summer, he was one of the most emotional and kind of just a little bit sad, lonely, missing his family than any of the kids that came. And some of them, after just a few days or a week, were excited to be in America and loved it. And he, and he did, but he was a very much a, home, a homebody. It was neat to see a difference. He knew he was only going to be here for a few months and then he'd go back home. So he was a lot more carefree and open and relaxed. I could tell you the story of three sisters. They were in the middle of a suicide bombing. The children could remember with vivid details of everything, what everyone was wearing, and when they recounted their story, it was pretty heart-wrenching to see that a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, and maybe a 10 or 11-year-old at the time were going through this. Once they got in here, you could see them sort of have a better level of comfort when they saw other kids from Solace. When they get physical therapy, we try to schedule them all together so socially that it helps them come out a little more. It's been interesting educating others, you know, as to what this is and that every person that's in Afghanistan, when you bring them over here, it gives us a chance for people to see them as something other than what you see on the news. Because what you see on the news, it's the wrong people and nothing's yes. gonna get better and we'll never overcome all these difficulties if all we hear is the horrible things about each other. Did the little deaf boys get treated for their deafness? One of the boys got hearing aids. Could he hear then? A little bit, a little bit, but neither one is ever gonna hear. And, and the littler boy, 
he wasn't even able to get hearing aids. I love sign language, so I started teaching them little simple signs, and they got it. And they would sit down and ask, especially the older boy, he really got it, he really picked up on this, and started learning some signs, learning some manners, learning to sit and have an exchange, as simple as it was. And what we did was, um, I had this American Sign Language book, I had the interpreters go through and translate everything. We sent it back to his to his family. And he came the next year and we got the book out again and, and started and he loved it. He just loved it. And we'd sit together and read those books. And again, they're in English and I'd just sign. And he didn't understand everything, but he got that there was a way to communicate. And he never had that before. We have had unfortunate cases that we were not able to help much. Menhaj, I think he was about 13. He was really, really small and really, really thin. He, he, he weighed less than the kids in my preschool class. He was he, maybe 40 pounds. His hands were misshapen and his feet were misshapen. He couldn't walk very well. He couldn't function. He tried to get on a bike, and but it was hard for him to walk. I mean, getting up and down the stairs, he had to have us hold on to him. And he was the most joy-filled little guy. He just has this amazing spirit and intelligence. He was so smart, and, and he was so devout. He would sit with the other kids and teach them a lesson on the Quran. The little theologian, I'd sometimes write math problems for him and he'd, he'd do these math problems and just, he'd sit down at our piano and with his fingers, he would be so determined to play a little melody. And basically, they they got some braces for his legs to help him walk, but there was really nothing. I, I think they diagnosed him with some sort of muscular dystrophy. Well, I, I think there was just just something about his hopeful spirit and his joy that was just kind of stopped us in our tracks. I had the opportunity to travel to Afghanistan with Solace and one of the times we went we had an interview with a family and, and it was a, a girl she was 15 years old. She was maybe three and a half feet tall, and her name was Atifa. She had an immense swelling on uh, the whole side of her head. She came over here in hopes that we could diagnose the problem and, and, and heal her. During the interview, this father just went on and on about how bright his daughter was from going to school even though she was ridiculed. And then to hear Atifa talk, she had hopes of being a doctor. She was intuitive and she was kind and she wanted to cook dinner for us. She wanted to be helpful um, and she had a sense of humor and we couldn't even understand what she was saying but we knew it was funny and she would laugh at herself. We would absolutely consider it again. My children actually uh, talk about Miriam still. There are some songs that we would always play in the car. And so when the car, you know, when the song comes on in the car, um, they, they will, you know, tell me, oh, mommy, this was the song that we sang with Miriam. When we went to the airport to drop them off, of course, I knew they were very excited to see their families, but um, we just, I cried like a baby. I mean, these kids call you mommy and daddy all summer long. You love on them. Um, so it was difficult to say goodbye, not knowing what they were going back to. You know, I was, I was really nervous and, and scared and sad for them and was gonna miss them, loving these kids like my own and praying for them, for their health and their safety. But when they did get back, we got pictures. 
where we got to see them reuniting with their families and to see them hugging and happy with their siblings and their parents again, knowing they were safe and they were with people who loved them again, their families who sacrificed them coming halfway across the world to America um, just to get medical treatment for these kids. It just was such a relief to me that they really were where they needed to be back with their families in their country that they loved.